Hi everyone, welcome to the Car Chat Podcast. I'm Sam Moores and with us today we have Alberto Moreno Garcia. Sorry if I got that a little bit wrong. Welcome. Thank you so much, Sam. How are you doing? Yeah, yeah, very good. Can you tell the audience a little bit about sort of who you are and what you do? I am the co-founder of Rooster App. It's the app that connects people through cars and uh, I'm here in the, in the perfect podcast to talk about our passion for cars. Where did this all begin? You know, where did the idea, what, what did you do prior to this? So back in 2017, I, I bought my first real sports car, a Porsche Cayman. And, and then I was so excited uh, about like it was a brand new model. Uh, I was trying to find out people, the same car, similar kind of uh, like if they had the 718 Boaster Cayman. And, and I figured out like, hey, this would be something out there like uh, in a world full of apps that uh, they should be meant for car enthusiasts to connect in mm. real life, to talk about cars. And I was kind of amazed that uh, the final solution that I had to do it was to go back to the uh, Porsche forum that I was member of since 15 years ago and say, yeah, I'm from Madrid. Uh, I just spec this car, it's arriving in March. Like, is there anybody in the same situation? So not even in the UK, that is a really uh, car c- country, neither in the States. So that was the main reason and, and re- did a uh, brief research on uh, other countries and also like uh, trying to, to see if there was other similar solutions, but because not even knowing what is going on in your truck, in your home truck uh, that weekend was available. Uh, in, in yeah. like not even a site like you go to the Harama track that is our local track here in Madrid go to the website and there's maybe three track days happening and nobody, nothing is listed in their website so yeah. uh, it was like so how, how people connect it's just WhatsApp group, Facebook groups very like old forums that uh, have been member for 20 years uh, and still we are using this kind of thing so that, that was what triggered like the, the concept of making an app that easily connect you with the people that are local and that you care the most because uh, as you know like uh, people usually care like hey this type of cars uh, usually like they give you a lot of information what type of car guy you are yeah, 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 yeah. I've I've found that very much with my stuff, like my calendar, and I'll I'll, I'll look on Instagram, and there'll be the craziest event ever mm. happening like today, and I didn't know about it like at yeah. all. And it could be nearby, could be far away, but you're just like, how am I meant to know about this? Like, where's the the big calendar with all of the stuff? And it's like yep. you said, you have to go into. You either have to know the people that are organizing it or you have to go into forums and sort of check on that or individual website news updates and things. And it's it's all quite disjointed and, and not very easy. Um, so before, before this, did you have any sort of background in building apps or in no, this is, tech? No, this, this is my first time when I'm a computer science engineer. Uh, okay. But I started my career in consulting at Deloitte, the, the consulting firm. Mm-hmm. I was manager there for almost eight years, and uh, when this idea came to my mind, um, I was so excited about getting that car. I called my business partner; he's from the states. Uh, he loved the idea, the concept. He liked cars too, and, and we decided to quit our jobs and full focus mm-hmm. on, on this. Nice, nice. And what was what was the sort of process? Because presumably it's taken. When when did you start? When did you sort of start building it? So the, the idea came, as I said, in 2017. Then yeah. I, I already confirmed with my co-founder that he was on board around June uh, 2017. And we start just in a piece of paper writing like uh, what, what we would like to have ideally in the app, some kind of requirements, some kind of uh, small designs. Uh, and then during that summer, we, we did a professional design with a designer. And September 2017, we started with the development that took around one year um, and one year of full dedication because we were in, the, in December, like we had a, a company that is a specialist in developing apps because even though I am a computer science engineer, I'm not a, a coder. Um, yeah. So uh, back in December, we realized, okay, so we just built the profile, the login screen, uh, two things. So we have... Uh, million things are still pending to, to launch a very basic first person. So we end up going to Valencia, that is another town in, 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 uh, in Spain, 
uh, three hours from Madrid, every week, uh, living there for three days with the developers like from January to June in order to wait. Like, we cannot miss summer 2018 one year later and we are still alive. So it was kind of tough to have a, a very basic and, and really like not uh, something that we were really proud about at the first version mm. that we launched in August 2018. And, and it was really like encouraging to see like, hey, like everybody was, the feedback was, hey, shit, at least uh, somebody is trying to build something that we are looking for. Like it's so hard, as you, mean, as you said, uh, to find out what is going on around you, what is the best route to go to nearby and these kind of things that as an enthusiast, uh, we are always uh, talking and looking for. And uh, they were so excited that that encouraged us to, hey, let's make this professional, let's hire some team, let's do this like uh, with more resources and start building the project, uh, especially from January 2019. Was it we, a, yeah. oh, I was yeah. going to say, was it a difficult you know, pitching to, I, I presume you've taken on investors at some point, um, like pitching, did did they all buy into it straight away or did you have to sort of revise well, your strategy? In the, in the, beginning, in the beginning, we, we start with our own savings. So mm -hmm. uh, the whole development was with our own savings uh, from my business partner and myself. Uh, after we launched and then we got this excitement of the community, we decided to go friends and family. And after that, we started a crowdfunding campaign. And many users of the app has invested mm -hmm. on Roaster. And, and now we are in the process of trying to, to convince a venture capital firm to, to join the, and make yeah. this uh, to the next level. But it's really yeah, yeah. tough, uh, as you can imagine, until like there are phases, the phases that you don't have a customer, then you have customer, then you start working with OEMs, then, okay, it sounds better, but you don't have enough users, oh, <laughs> but you are only in Spain, no, no, now you are in the UK. No. So it's, it's a tough journey, but uh, really, really enjoying the process because like, uh, like every day we are getting messages from enthusiasts, hey, so glad that you are pushing this, so glad that mm. you're building this. So that's the, the cast that we need to keep uh, going. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, yeah. Have there been some real like turning points in terms of a certain number of users in a certain country or where it's been easier to get brands involved or, you know, other companies and things? Well, we started in Spain with when we had around 40,000 members. Um, mm -hmm. And then they were really interested in, in reaching uh, this kind of audience. Like we have also, of course, some data of which model do you drive, uh, where are you from, and these kind of things that brands are looking for. Like we started with Alpine. Um, and then they were amazed, like, hey, so you can like bring people with M2s, with uh, Porsche 911 Sport Boxsters to, to test drive the Alpine A110. And they were <laughs> shocked, like, uh, yeah, yeah, we can do that. And and then they we start working with them, then BMW, Toyota, and others, mostly with BMW corporate level, like with the OEM corporate levels here in Spain. We did some work in the UK too. And now in the process of expanding our reach in the UK, now that we have a bigger audience, around 55,000 people there, uh, to do the same. And, uh, well, easily, like we just uh, launched the marketplace, the first version of the marketplace, mm. because... In those forums that I was member and in, well, in all those uh, groups and so on, uh, I'm sure that you are experiencing the same. It's always like, hey, where are you taking your car to do this? Or what is the best site to buy tires, to yeah. buy whatever? So that's the other common question that uh, enthusiasts are doing each other, even in our internal chats of the of the app. So we decide, hey, like another great value for our users will be to connect them with the businesses and uh uh, websites that they are looking for in order to fulfill their, their, their dreams. Yeah, I had a look. I was I was looking because we've done some stuff. I organized a meet and we have done some stuff together. And um, I was just looking on the app today and I looked in the map view and zoomed out and was like, oh, what are these places? And like, it's obviously places that I don't know how you end up on the app as a place, but it was like, mm -hmm. oh, there's a car sort of place down the road from here or there's a shop or there's a garage or whatever it was interesting sort of seeing w what was on there but also like you know zoom out and go oh i didn't know that was there 
Um, yeah. I thought that was quite we, This week, quite we, we released, or well, last week, sorry, like we released this route sharing functionality that is really good that uh, because it gives a lot of uh, power or a lot of value for the user. Like even if you are living in an area where maybe there are not many people still on roster, you can still discover routes that people are driving, uh, you can serve them and you can even drive it uh, uh, through the navigation of, of the app and even share it with friends and navigate and drive together in real time. So yeah, that's, that's something that, uh, that that is another step forward in, in the process of adding value to the community. And in a few days, we have around 400 uh, routes that have been shared on the app, like in US, UK and Spain. Yeah, because I saw it when we did our meet when I set off to go to the meet, I don't know whether it's the same feature. It said like, do you want to share your, okay, I don't know whether it was share your route or it's like share your driving. It says yeah, you're you, driving to the event. And then does, so, how does that work? Yeah, so now like whenever you are creating an event, you can even add what is the route that you're gonna do if you're gonna do a driving yeah. event. Uh, if you don't add a route, the app is gonna still say, you, hey, you wanna drive to the event and it's gonna, use a, a navigation functionality that allows you also to share optionally their location so people say, uh, know that, hey, are you arriving, who, who are coming, and okay, so on. Yeah. Uh, and that's something that, uh, of course, like, uh, like is, is the step of, like, we, we see roster as, okay, you have a block of discoverability, like make things easy to discover. The other block is make easy to connect with other people or with events. And that matching process is something that we're going to keep improving because like, uh, like we want to be the perfect match of, hey, you are a Porsche guy, you live in this area of London, and suddenly there is another Porsche guy in your yeah. neighborhood, and you can easily match like the best girlfriend <laughs> that you would love to have, the, the, the same <laughs> concept, but automatically, because this is quite easier with cars. Um, so that matching process and the end product and the end block is like improving the experience of driving. So mm. well, once you are uh, doing an event yourself, it's like you have a tool that is suggesting you this drive or that you can set up the route, drive it, share it, and navigate. And soon, like uh, hopefully by the end of the year, we'll have even integrated with CarPlay. So the okay. whole experience of oh, driving nice. together in groups will be another step further. That sounds like on the back end, a lot of... <laughs> Oh, yeah. A lot of crunching yeah. and network. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's horrible. <laughs> but we are in the process and, and it's going better. Yeah, 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 yeah. It looks, has it been difficult with, because just like looking at the app, how it is now, as the view, and I know it's probably changed quite a lot even from when I <laughs> previously, before I downloaded it, but the as it's grown and let's say the number of events increase, and hmm. the number of meets and whatever, all the sort of things, the inputs coming into the app increase. How are you going to make it, or ha has it been really tricky to make it easy to see what's there? For example, if I'm like a Porsche person, if I say, you know, I want, I'm a Porsche person, I want to go to a Porsche specific meet, is it mm -hmm. quite easy to sort of navigate that or? Well, uh, the way that we are doing it, because one thing that we have learned building our first app is that the user experience like is, is something really important and at the same time you have to let the users do as less as possible by their own. It has to yeah. be really seamless because like many times you think, hey, I, it would be ideal if I can filter this, 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 and I yeah. can do it. No, it has to be that the app itself recognizes that you are a Porsche guy because you have a Porsche in your garage, because of the location, it's just suggesting. So those kind of the discover thing or the okay. events are already with some kind of intelligence that, uh, of course, like location is a very important uh, matter uh, to recommend and connect people uh, locally. So that's why you are not seeing events from Dread or you are not seeing events from the States and even barely seeing content from, from Dread right now yeah. because we are waiting too much today. A UK guy wants to, to see content from UK uh, and then uh, that's some kind of algorithms that we are improving every day in order to, to improve that matching experience 
we are not in, in that sense of, hey, I want to look for a Porsche. Maybe you can still look for Porsche in the, in the search and so on, but it's especially matching uh, users and also matching events that are local right now. Mm. Yeah, because I get... But you can still see the like who is going, like, hey, what are the car attending on this event? And yeah. maybe it's all Porsches or some Porsches, and then you are interested and you hit that point. Yeah, yeah, it's quite interesting seeing that. I think having a garage, so the app's got a garage on it, and that for any car person is always just fun. I think they're like, mm. you know, you like putting some photos of your car, whether, wherever it is, whatever website has a garage. Yeah. I've, I've always done yeah. it. I've always like yeah. put the photos in and done the stuff. And then, yeah, with the, the app, when people say they're attending, they seem to be, sometimes people can say they're attending, but not say what car they're in. And then some people yeah, are attending yeah, they, and they say what car they're coming it's, in. It's optional. It's totally optional because we know that there are people that are so private. Like, in fact, the garage is optional. We don't yeah. force them to, to put the data in the app. Uh, also, it's optional to, to say which uh, car are you bring to an event or even when you are selling location, it's optional. Like, uh, because, of course, privacy is something that is very really relevant for our users too. Mm. One of the things... Because with my event, I wanted it to be reasonably... I wanted to have some sort of control on how big it was. Mm -hmm. And that looks like slightly complicated. Like, I don't know what... Yeah, we, we are fixing, go. sorting that out. Uh, like, even... I don't know if it's this week or the following. Uh, that, like, you're going to be able to accept attenders through the app. Okay. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, because now the only way to control it was, like, hey, I set it up public and then... If, there are 20 people and I don't want to be more than 20. I yeah. put it private and then no, nobody can see it. But uh, now we are sorting that out so you can accept attenders and we have to request to, and, and so the host can control the, the number of attendees. Yeah, that would be really good. And be a bit because I, for example, the ones I want to do from now onwards, I don't really want, I don't really want everyone to know where they are because mm -hmm. if I say where they are, anyone can turn up and I do kind of yeah. want to control the number of people turn yeah. up. So having like a, a waiting list function or yeah, something. That's going to be there. And then until you've been accepted, you don't, you can't see the full, yeah, the the full, full details. <laughs> yeah. um, and then I guess an issue that I probably might come across is, and you're going to get this on anything, it's people that say they're attending and then they don't come. <laughs> like, ah, yeah, especially if it's free. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Like whenever you are doing the, something like uh, for free, then people like maybe they are lazy this morning, it's so early. So yeah, not totally. But uh, well, I think that's totally fine. Like uh, even some users have suggested, hey, I have this guy that has uh, hit three times to attend my events and he never saw that. <laughs> Like, I, is there any way to rate people in this app? And I was like, <laughs> well, we didn't go that far yet. But uh, <laughs> even some people are suggesting, like, hey, like, our, or like for example, like some people, even though my full experience during the, 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 all the events, like, I don't know how many I have hosted, but maybe more than 100 events through the app. And, yeah. and I never had an, an issue with uh, a user. But still, like some people are like, hey, if this guy is a jackass or he did something stupid in yeah. the event, it should be something that I can notify or report. So so kind of people, if they do the same, uh, then it's like, hey, this guy is not going to be accepted in my meets. You know, that, is, in my that is an interesting idea because I'm not... You, know, you always worry that someone might do something stupid mm -hmm. and ultimately it's, it's yeah. on them. It's their, their decision to do something stupid, but... Yeah, if you are running it, then it's quite nice to be able to, to have something like that. But then I don't know, because like, people just but make the different usernames. The, the reality is that uh, like whenever I host, for example, Drive, if it's a Drive event, that, that's where the risk is. Um, I usually kind of do a brief a speech of, hey, this is not for racing. This is not, yeah. you're not going to do a stupid thing. You're not going to overtake on like a, yeah. It's not a law, like you're not going to do crazy things when crossing towns and so on. And people adapt to the group, you know? Like yeah. if you do crazy things, even the same guy that was really calm down and yeah. and behaving perfectly in the previous meet, he's going to go crazy. 
So even if you're going to go far, you have to go like it. It's just like to enjoy the drive, to, to meet people. And, and they adapt. Like even if there's a guy coming with a, with a car that, oh, this guy, like just seeing the car, this is going to be bringing trouble, yeah. you know, <laughs> bringing trouble to the event. And they adapt. And, 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 and usually, like, I never had an issue with that. And, and then kind of amazed, but the people adapt to the group, to the group behave. Like, uh, so uh, that's why we didn't go that path right away of, hey, this is something that is happening in, uh, very often, so we need yeah. to control that everybody's comfortable. But no, like the, the, the usual behavior is that people love it, people connect, it's easy to talk about cars, even if you don't have the same car, uh, the style, uh, and that's what is good about Roaster is that there is a guy with a Porsche GT3 connecting with a guy with a classic JDM car and, yeah. and, and, they, and they are talking and, and that's what they love. It's like, uh, because it's, it's a very easy way to connect with people that like cars. Yeah, I thought I was, the, the one I did was really nice in terms of the number of people. Like we didn't mm-hmm. have many people, but we had a wide variety, mm-hmm. a really big variety of cars. And not just like expensive ones, but also cheap ones and just classics, new, whatever. But because it was sort of small edge, everyone chatted, everyone literally just chatted to each other. And it was small mm. enough that like, it really was yes. like a proper group, chilled community kind of situation. And everyone got to know everyone, you know, have a bit of a chat and whatever. And it was just like, it was actually just really nice. And I've been to loads of, large meets so i don't know 100 cars 200 cars 500 and what i find is if you go to a really large one you only talk to the people you know or maybe one you know the person you park next to if you're parking at the same time Mm -hmm. that sort of thing but then that size that's like i don't know 20 or less maybe yeah then you really do everyone just like kind of talks to each other and it's it's a really nice sort of community Mm -hmm. um but your point about when people arrive, you know, talking to them and saying X, Y, Z, you know, like this, yeah. is, this is what we're about or this is not or this is not acceptable. I think you've got to be quite an unusual person to have a real conversation with the organizer who's like, yeah. this is chilled. Yeah. No burnouts, no donuts. Yeah. And then go and do it. Like it's a pretty rogue move in a, yeah. in a situation, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Totally agree. But yeah, it's um, yeah, it's 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 an, it's an interesting one. I think a few, like a f- most of the people turned up, had followed me on social media and stuff like that. But a couple of people have found the event through the app, which I I kind of thought was slightly funny. Not not that it, that the app works or anything, but just as in like they had no idea that it was basically my meat <laughs> with and my, <laughs> yeah, my yeah. car and stuff, and they're yeah. just like, oh yeah, cool, like hi. Hi, but I th- that was quite fun. It was it was cool to meet just a bunch of different people, and it was and they brought some nice cars as well. Um, so yeah, I'm definitely going to be doing more. And I think for me, the the main functionality that I want is that ability to sort of refine the group a little bit um, somehow. You know, no, just, yeah, just have a list. Hopefully, we will have it even either or this weekend or the following. So mm. yeah, that's that's really cool. So. Where are your main sort of markets? So it's Spain, obviously, where you started, yeah. and then UK and Spain, it's UK, and US. We have started especially in California, uh, but now we are starting to expand to Texas and Florida, mainly because of the weather and also because they are uh, like all the car scene there is huge mm. uh, and is uh, and it's not seasonal, so. New York, there is a good scene too, but in winter time, nobody's doing yeah. a thing there. But uh, in Florida, Miami, Houston, it's all season. So that's why we are trying to start focusing on those markets. And also because the number of enthusiasts that are there um, is, is huge. Good thing about the UK is that since it's an island and also it's kind of dense, helps a lot to that make that connection happen. Like you are yeah. totally fine to drive up 30 miles uh, up or down and you are really reaching many, many people that love cars in that area. And that's 
complex in the States because, hey, yeah, it looks easy that, hey, this is something that people uh, want to have, uh, looking for, like a car app, but, yeah, but you need to have that density to add extra value to the to the user, even though we, we now have functionalities that even as a standalone user in some area, you will enjoy the app. But the real value of the app is connecting people in real life. So uh, you, you need to make that bubble of activity and uh, grow that community uh, to a certain level that needs are happening here and there and people are still sticking. You know? mm. Yeah, yeah. Because when I have a look, there's, there seems, at least I get a lot of notifications of things that are going on. And then mm-hmm. at least when you open it up na- now, definitely where I am, there's definitely stuff yeah. around that you're like, oh, okay. Yeah, I'll yeah, have a yeah. look. So uh, just before joining the, the podcast, I, I saw there is a, an ambassador of the app hosting. Uh, he posted like five minutes before joining and he has already 12 attendees in the UK. So it's really nice to see because the app notifies people nearby. So yeah. you can easily, like, you see the profile of the event and, I, okay, it's something that I'm interested or not. And if you are not, you skip it and that's it. But that that's really exciting when you, in a matter of 30 minutes, hey, I have 12 people to go to this yeah. weekend to whatever. And, and, and that's the real value. You know? Yeah, it's cool. And, and just having, like, a, a place for all of hmm. this because, like, for me to organize, let's say a meet or something and have it, I know roughly how many people are going to turn up. I can give them all the information. I can get some sort of waiting list or, you know, a, a group mm. to send to. Actually, to do that independently of a specific app or even like like a Facebook group or a Facebook event or yeah. those sorts of things. And I, I don't really use Facebook very much at all anymore. Um it's actually quite hard. Like it's yeah, to sort it's of hard. independently pull this stuff together is actually quite challenging. So that is one thing that this is mm. it's definitely helped anyway with with doing that sort of stuff. What in terms of the the users and the activity is mm. is it different in different countries? Like, do you get different sorts of events and things in let's say the UK versus the US or Spain versus the UK, or are they all kind of similar? Well, um, they, they are quite, kind of similar. Like, uh, of course, like there is a big culture of uh, meats in terms of cars and coffee in the states. Yeah. Like uh, in, in in Spain, usually those are not that popular. Are more like about driving and going on a Saturday to this coffee shop, start here and end up there. Yeah. Uh, and in UK, it's kind of a mix. Uh, it's funny that uh, the YouTuber Joe Achilles uh, yeah. came to Madrid uh, recently and we did a drive with the Spanish users oh, nice. with him with uh, BMW and, and he was amazed because like, hey, we, we need to bring this to the UK and I said, but what? <laughs> <laughs> what, what, what? You, you have the same? No, no, this like this kind of concept of doing like longer drives kind of like really picking the, the road and doing it like really... Because usually they are doing like drives to, hey, let's drive to caffeine machine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Or let's do kind of a small drive, not really meant to, to be a, a driven a drive event that much. And it's more about gathering, talking, having a coffee and so on. And we did a really long drive uh, around the outside of Madrid. He loved it. And and, and, and and seems that, yes, they are not that into driving in groups. Um, but even though I, I hosted two drives in the UK in London when, when I was there about two years ago. Yeah. And, and people love it. So the concept is pretty similar. Uh, like, uh, I think the car guy is a car guy here and there. Uh, we are yeah. very different, like, depending on, like, there are people that are really into content. That's a really hard thing to to sort out in terms of community or for the venture capital or the investor that you were asking, like, Hey, but what is the, the, the thing that people love the most? Mm. But there are, as you know, car guys that are really into going to events like crazy. Like I want to do everything. Yeah. Other ones are about driving by themselves and enjoying the car. Other ones are about watching every YouTube video yeah. that is available. Other ones are forum guys and they are really into discussion. What is the next mod that I should do? And that, that's what their thing. So that's the hard thing also about building a community app that covers all that 
yeah. uh, that uh, that spectrum, you know, because uh, like if we focus into like the driving feature, then okay, this is a niche already. So yeah, these yeah. are the car guys. So if we are just sorting out the problem of the guys that are really into driving, then it's not appealing for everybody. Yeah. So that's one of the big challenges that we have. But uh, we started with this concept of meeting people in real life. That is what uh, resonates the most and what it kind of excites people the most and make them stick. But of course, we are expanding those functionalities, like uh, in order to have more discussions or easily drive or stuff like that. So, but yes, the behavior of uh, the car enthusiasts uh, all over the world is pretty similar, and, and 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 that's a good thing for our platform too. Mm. We don't need to build something specific for UK or for for Spain. Like they're they're kind of pretty similar. It, it's just the audience, the audience that maybe in the UK, of course, we have a higher level of cars, more expensive, people are more into BMW M uh, performance cars, uh, Porsches, and maybe here are more into hot hats, yeah. and in the US are more Mustangs, Camaros, and stuff like that. But at the end, they are pretty similar. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Same people, just different, different cars and whatnot. No, I think the having having some sort of functionality for organizing drives, yeah, is quite different because if you go into Instagram, you can see if you like photos and videos and that's consuming that, you know, you can go on YouTube, Instagram, whatever, and you can mm -hmm. see as much crazy cars and stuff as you there's just not enough wow. hours in the day to consume the stuff that is mm -hmm. on Instagram and and, and on YouTube, but actually, if you want to meet people and have a chat, that's not a, those are not very good platforms for any of that. Um, mm -hmm. And if you want to go for a drive, like, like I said, it's it's actually very difficult. It comes back to what we were talking about in the beginning about going on forums. So I moved house slightly to a slightly different part of London, and and I get press cars occasionally, or I've got a car and I want to do a drive, and I ah, maybe make a video or something, but. I want to look for good driving roads within not to, you know, a short, as short a distance as possible from home, but have a good driving mm. road. And that was really tri tricky without just finding them myself and driving around, which I did to some extent. It was like going into, so in the UK, we have Piston Heads, which is like mm. a forum that's been around forever. And like, I found a thread on piston heads about driving roads in that in a sort of area not too far away and found some some suggestions and stuff but yeah but that's really but that's really sad is the yeah. same experience i had like uh, and that's what triggered my idea for roster is like how this is can be possible that when i was 16 years old i was doing the same yeah um and you need to really dig in look for and this is not something that the special young people want to do. Yeah. <laughs> like uh, we are used to forums, but young people are not used to. No, forums. I know. They are and used to Instagram or stuff like that. That is click, click, click. And they have. And forums are weird places. Like each forum has their own sort of rule and codes and, yeah. you know, jokes Vibes, yeah. and stuff like that. And if you just ask, I always found I would have a really car specific question. So when I had an M2, I wanted to know uh, what might be a good brake pad for road driving mm. and a bit of track use. And I and I commented, made a post on Piston Heads about, you know, hi, I've got an M2 and I want to change the pads and upgrade the brakes, etc. I'm getting loads of brake fade. And the first six comments were, learn to drive. I drive my car at the Nürburgring. <laughs> I've never had any problems. <laughs> all this sort of stuff and, and then one person was like okay like i do actually i've come across you i know that you can you do other stuff it's probably not this here's some suggestion you know some actual useful questions yeah. but you basically in those situations you have to ask your question and then you almost have to write an explanation to answer all of the questions they're going to come back being like look i do drive yeah. other cars i have had coaching i know how to drive Blah 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 blah. <laughs> Just answer the question, please. And you get so much rubbish. <laughs> I'm in for yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, it's true. It's true. It's crazy. Yeah, it's uh, and especially if you are like a new buy in that forum, like get ready to get hit. Yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> it's, 
Uh, and well, some people are totally fine with that, but some people are like, okay, I'm going back. To, yeah. To this it makes. Anymore. So that's sad. I, I, yeah. Thinking about that and thinking about, you know, where to. I, I ended up messaging someone. Uh, it was Misha, actually, um, at the Nurburgring. Um, and asked him because I knew they'd run an M2 and, and asked him some stuff. But how do you, with the, the companies that are starting to appear on the app, how do you decide if a company can be on that app? Is there any kind of, do you just go, look, the more the better, or do you filter it a little bit, or do you try and only get recommended places? Well, for the, for the marketplace, what we have started is, uh, first of all, we, we do a, a review of our own, of which are the like best detailing shops, apparently, according yep. to some platforms, like, Google, Instagram, and so on in North London. Yeah. Okay. Then we go there. Hey, let's try to have at least one or two detailing shops. And we go there, chat with them. If they are willing to onboard, that's how we are onboarding rate them right now. We don't make them compete each other in the very beginning. But ideally, a next phase would be that users are rating yeah. those businesses. Users are commented because that's Another value is like if I can easily know which are the places that are trusted by Sam, yeah. and I know that Sam is, uh, especially because as car guys, we are really picky, yeah. really picky about it. Like my father doesn't care about where to get uh, his tires on, but no, I, yeah, I yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> it looks like a simple process, but, but, uh, and then that kind of link between brands and also people you trust that it. Sam is taking this car to or yeah. uh, getting uh, the, his car into this detailing shop. I can trust that shop without even asking. Mm. That's that's again the purpose of doing everything so automated, so uh, intelligent that the value is inherent to the app. Yeah. Like, uh, like you go there, okay, if Sam is going to this track day on a regular basis, this, this is an event organizer that I can trust. Yeah. Um, so that's the, the next evolution, but so far we're, we're texting, testing, um, uh, the model and also trying to, to learn from the process of what it works, what it not. And, and then uh, again, uh, as if everything in this app is iterate, iterate and, and take another three months, four months, five months to, yeah, <laughs> to have yeah, 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 yeah. Cause it's, it's, that's my method. If I need my wheels doing or whatever, PPF or something mm. like that. It's it's straight away I ask, I have a WhatsApp group with like 10 people in it that we yeah. just chat about cash stuff all day and I'll go, does anyone know? Or I'll be mm. very specific and I know someone, let's say like Tim, Shmi, I'll, I'll say, look, yeah. I need my wheels repainted. Who do you use? And he'll go, I use this company, Dunk. And, and if, if it's nearby or whatever, he's like, okay, or maybe use this one that's a bit closer to you or whatever. And and then that's it. That's, mm. I don't I don't look around. I don't Google. I don't do anything. I'm just like, he's done the work. <laughs> he's decided it's good enough for him. Yeah. I'm going to that place. Uh, and those sorts of referrals would, have massive value, I think. Not like... Yeah, the good thing also is we, we, we can have that in the short future, but also, again, the, the data about what kind of cars are going yeah, to Yeah, 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 yeah. And, and that gives you a lot of information of, okay, this is going to be a very expensive place because it's only Ferrari yeah. people uh, going, or oh, this looks like a detailing that many regular uh, cars are going. So, uh, and also my friend is going to this. So let's try it out, you know, uh, because the make model uh, gives you a lot of information. And also it's like in terms of recommending, like in the future will say, hey, other M2 owners yeah. are going to, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, this is a BMW M specialist. That's a that's a really important distinction, actually, because let's say the recommendations for I might have like for body shop type stuff. I know some very high end body shops, but they're very expensive. But I have a little Peugeot that someone's smashed into the door, not badly, but a little bit, and I need a body shop for that. But I'm not sending it to mm. a body shop that does Bugattis because it will cost yeah. you know more than the car <laughs> to do. So. <laughs> I actually, for that car, I want someone, I want a recommendation of similar-ish, you know, value yeah. cars, but that people go these, it's mainly for me that the people 
that are working there care about mm. what they're doing. And that generally means they get quite good at it. It's when they don't care that you just get like absolute trash. Um, but yeah, it's an interesting one. There's definitely loads. There's a lot in that of finding the right places near you. And I think if you find the right one, you're like a lifelong customer. <laughs> sure. But yeah. Um, so in, in terms of other things, where's, where's the app? What are the, the main things that you're working on at the moment moving forward, whether it's like big features or resolving issues? I well, imagine a lot of that, of that is probably a huge part of it. Yeah, the, in terms of uh, monetization of the app, as I, mean, as I told you, like we are iterating the marketplace to make it uh, smarter and to make it more uh, collecting the feedback of the users. That's one thing. In terms of driving, like we still have another functionality, like, well, like this sharing location thing now is on and off or on or off, it's optional, yeah. but you cannot do it in closed groups okay. so far. So that the next step will be that you can share that route that you have either found out in, in roster or that you have built yourself, uh, share it with friends in the WhatsApp, then they can join, navigate, and also share the location only with that. Okay, group. yeah, yeah, that's quite good. That's the next step in order, especially for rallies, like this kind of, like, I don't know, like Gumball 3000 and stuff. But we already know that they're going to go fast yeah. and they don't want to say that publicly no. that hey, I'm going like crazy uh, doing 200 miles per hour in, in this yeah. road. Uh, so that's fine. But you can still share it with your private club or private group uh, and only those are going to see you in the map and hopefully soon also in carbon. That's a good okay. idea. Even though that, that that's uh, the, the end goal that you can also go to your modern car with CarPlay or uh, Android Auto and then, hey, you can easily see all the events that are nearby. And also you can, like, hey, open this route, drive it, and do it uh, from different yeah. cars. So that will be, the in terms of users, the, the best thing that we can offer to the users soon. Also introduce discussions in, into groups. Mm. Like, uh, even though, because uh, as you might experience, like, the discussions on Instagram are really not that long, yeah. like they are not really into the detail. It's more about the content, photo, and, and pretty direct questions that you don't, you will then ask on, on Instagram, maybe the other specific question about the end to yeah. exhaust or pads or whatever. So we want to introduce that into groups to try to bring that value of the forums and that knowledge into specific clubs and those discussions more kind of tweets, but just in groups to be more focused and specific. Yeah, that's a and, good idea. Um, with that one, and then in terms, because um, yeah. I, I was with the using the app, and I set up a I set up a car chat group because I was like, well, maybe maybe I'm you know when you when you're new to an app, you're trying to work out what's the best way of using it mm -hmm. to to do what yeah. you want to do, and I want to get people to see the events and stuff, and I created a, a group, but then actually, I it it having some sort of forum like features where you can have a, you know, a mm. thread that's you can follow thread, rather yeah. than mm -hmm. it at the moment, it's sort of like posts and then people can comment on the posts and that's it. It's not, you can't quite have some of that stuff. Um, yeah. We have chats, but chats have their purpose. I mean, and they are so dynamic yeah. and you don't want that to be for every single specific question. Yeah. Uh, that's what also we like about the, the events to be set up the, on the app because you set it up you have comments in the event but it's kind of at their own pace people can discover it and if you do that you do that in a whatsapp group it's like hey i'm doing yeah. this and then the discussion starts going and it's a never-ending thing and the, the, the event happens yeah. and, and and many times you, you don't want to spend that time in a, in a chat in those discussions it get messy so the same with discussions it's like uh like we want, like we want to throw that, and again, the data is gonna bring a lot of potential in the future. That that M two question, you can throw it in an M two group is yeah. one thing, but if we can recommend that discussion to M two owners, yeah. then yeah, 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 yeah. They are, they, the right people are seeing that. Yeah, that's neat. 
just random guys to tell you that you don't know how to drive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Having the chat. Um, yeah, yeah, that's the classic one. Is you put a question in a forum <laughs> and a bunch of people that don't have the car, don't know anything about it, just like, vomp, come in. And you're like, what, what are you talking about? Like, you have no experience of this whatsoever. I'm like, yeah, but... 335D remapped as the fastest car on the planet. That was a piston head sort of, <laughs> sort of thing from back in the day. Yeah, the, actually, the event chat thing was, um, that was very good. I, I, I really liked that of you've got the event and I can decide. I don't have to look at it. But on the day or a couple of days before, it's like, hi, everyone, blah, 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 blah. People can have a chat. Yeah. People can have a discussion. And you are linked in directly to everyone on that day. If someone's running late, they've got issues. That worked very well. I thought that as an integration. Yeah, especially because, I, like, again, for privacy purposes, like, uh, like now that we are so used to, at least in Spain, I think in the UK, but very popular too, WhatsApp. Like, but again, you have to give. Yeah, the phone. I don't want to do that. Like, so, 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 like, if somebody is inviting you to an event that is organized through WhatsApp, then right away, fifty people you yeah. don't know have their phone number. So, uh, especially for people like you, like are kind of public figures, content creators, like imagine that uh, everybody needs to know on the app, what is your phone number to, so yeah, well, it does a very important feature. And also that it opens the possibility of, of any event is you want is public and you start connecting with people that are not in that close group. Yeah. Like, if you are only organizing stuff in a Facebook group or in a WhatsApp group, it's only those members. Team. So uh, this is the, the way to open it publicly and start making connections uh, in a very different way, and especially for event organizers, like uh, that get, give that visibility that they need in order to get back what they are investing in. Yeah, that's a, that's a really important point about WhatsApp groups are great, but they're great for people you know. If you're, and yeah. yeah, even, you know, it protects the organizer from having their mobile number given out to 200 people, but also hmm. any of the guests, especially with the, you know, the garage feature or people say, just say someone's coming with, you know, a crazy car, like, I don't know, you know, something worth lots and lots of money. Everyone else in that group then knows that person's got that car and they know their phone number. Hmm. And, I, I, you know, who knows? But like the chances yeah. are that person's going to get some random cold calls at some point in time about, I don't know, anything, expensive goods. Um, <laughs> you know, like, oh, I've got this thing. Do you want to buy it? No, thank you. Um, but yeah, so that, that's an interesting part. Um, well, oh yeah, I have to say I, I've, I've used it a reasonable amount and I organized a meet and it was, it was good. I, I enjoyed it and I, I met a lot of you know, good people and um, it, it turned up to good feet, good meat. So I'm looking forward to the new the new features. Um, but I think it's, it seems like a reasonable point to uh, start winding this up. And I have five questions that I ask mm. every guest. Are you ready? Okay. <laughs> Do you have a most memorable driving trip or journey? Um, well, like. I really like uh, the north of Spain, mm. uh, uh, the north of Spain, Asturias. is a really like rally area, and there are some roads there that are like I cannot uh, forget about driving there uh, with my Geo Jaris. All right, yeah, uh, nice. That is the, per the perfect car for for that kind of road. And because they are empty, and the only thing that you see are cows, mm. and you can drive it uh, at no matter what hour you are, like uh, you can go there 11 if you didn't wake up earlier and it's going to be still nice. empty. Great views, great mountains, everything is green and you can see the sea in like just 10, 15 kilometers away. Yeah. So for me, those are the, the best uh, driving roads in Spain and, and always try to go there and enjoy uh, my car uh, every like, two, three months. Yeah, nice. How do you find the, uh, the GI Yaris? Well, I love it. Like, uh, in fact, like I bought the car and before all the hype started. <laughs> so my car yeah. arrived in, in December 2020. So it was the fifth car delivered in Spain. Yeah. And one month before, I got invited by Toyota to test drive it in Harama track. And I was like, 
everybody was already the, like the influencers, yeah. the journalists. They were like, "This is the car of the year," <laughs> blah, blah, blah. and and I was getting like a message every day, like, "Hey Alberto, I got another year, Jarvis. Hey Alberto, I got another year, Jarvis." And I was so pissed off that okay, I'm tired of this car <laughs> before even owning it. Yeah, yeah, How yeah, this yeah. is possible? So glad that I got uh, to drive the car in Harama track and it exceed my expectations by far. Like I was like, if this car is not like perfect or like really yeah, yeah, yeah. like loving it, <laughs> I'm going to say that I'm not like taking it deliver. You know, like I'm going to send the location and, and that's it because I was so pissed off. But the car is that, that it doesn't sound that for driving fast also sometimes it's good. Uh, the rest, like I really love it. Like the suspension, brakes, engine, gearbox uh, is amazing. It can handle all type of tarmac. Um, and well, uh, at the end, it's a great value, good fun, and and you can do whatever you want. Uh, even long distance driving is not that bad. Um, so just the sound is the, the, the point that I would change yeah. in the car to make it more exciting. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, I drove one. Um, to Le Mans and back with Toyota this year. And um, it is it is just a, I, it's funny your your point about all of the influences and the videos and the hype and stuff, because I remember when it came out and they were like, oh, this is a cool car, but like, can everyone just shut up about it for like <laughs> just six months? Yeah. I don't want to hear anything more about the GR Yaris because like they've all sold out yeah. and yeah. like whatever, and it's going to be great, fine. But yeah, it was pretty funny. Like that—that that definitely happens now. If if a car is like surprising and gets hype, it's because all the videos come out on like the same day. Everyone posts about it because of the, all the stuff, and I know that's what the manufacturers want. They want it all to drop, yeah, and make a big you know splash in one go. But yeah, it's quite funny that it's true that the car is totally like different. It's a it's a different monster. Like it's funny. Like the other thing I will have changed is the name. I wouldn't call it okay, Jarvis, yeah. you know, because like I would call it Toyota World Rally Car, <laughs> Toyota Ford Drive, whatever. But the sad thing is, like when people go and hey, have you got a Yaris? Like this is like what, like a like a, a mini or a bar that that a uh, John Cooper works. Like no, this is a total different type of yeah. car, you know. And and that's sad because they lost the opportunity. Like many people see that this car is expensive because they think that it's a Yaris that they have some mm. things and suddenly it's fast so that's the other thing but uh, overall I love yeah, it. yeah yeah and i think it's 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 made me look at yaris's differently because like i like the gr yaris but i see a normal yaris and i'm like huh it's like a it's related to the gr yeah. yaris like yeah, yeah yeah and i think that's probably a huge part of the reason they've, they've done it is yeah. that association um right if you could only drive one car for the rest of your life, uh, any value, and then you get a thousand euro car on the side. So you, you get one unlimited value sports car, whatever you like, and then one like f cheap. Uh, then it would be the Carrera GT. Right? Nice. Uh, I think for me is the, the best Porsche ever made. Porsche is my favorite brand. And, it, and I think it has the all the all the things that you are looking as an enthusiast, like it's the last natural aspirated P10, like coming from Remont Racing, it has a manual gearbox, it has, it's, it's the last analog super, almost mm. hypercar. Uh, I love the looks, I love the sound, like uh, like uh, to me it's the, it's the best that you can get as, as, as an enthusiast. So that will be the car, of course, like if I have that 1000 car too. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I think that's it's. We were. I was at this event yesterday called um, Supercar Driver Secret Me. I don't know whether you saw oh, any well, pictures yeah, I from saw it. it. I saw it's it. like a lot of F40s. F40s like uh, Renault Megans. Yeah, I saw. Yeah, 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 yeah exactly, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> um, but yeah, there was a bunch of Carrera GTs, and I was walking around with someone, and we we're like, you know, what? What would you pick? Ignoring there was an F1 GTR there as well, so that that was like peak. But ignoring the F1 GTR, um, I think a lot of people like I look at the Carrera GT and I love it. I love it. I think it's such a cool thing, and uh, and I'm also a massive Porsche fan, so 
it's like peak pretty much. Um, yeah, yeah, very cool. What do you think is the most undervalued car at the moment? But that is currently on sale or that... Uh, yeah, secondhand or on sale. Undervalued, like... Um, like in in terms of modern cars, I would say the uh, regular Miata is uh, mm-hmm. is a car that people are many times putting like, hey, man, it's just a Miata, but it's a, a really great package and great value. Yeah. Because uh, like uh, now that Toyota is coming with the GR86, I think it's going to be a good competition and maybe it's a, another step forward in terms of the perfect entry car for enthusiasts. Yeah. But... Um, it's, it's funny you say that because on my drive at the moment, I've not bought one, but I have a Press MX-5. I've never driven an MX-5, a, a modern MX-5. I've driven an old one. Um, but yeah, literally sitting outside this window here is, is an MX-5. I'm quite interested to drive it. Yeah, because it, it, it's lightweight. It has perfect gearbox and roaster, so you can experience the open-top experience. It's very direct. It's not that powerful that it gets uh, scary you to, to drive fast. So it can make you better driver. You can enjoy it. You, it doesn't run a lot of gas. So it, it's a really well-balanced car. Uh, the other car that I will say is the, the Alpine A110. Like mm. In my opinion, that car is the, the best sports car that you can get currently Like in that range like you have to, in order to level up, if you own an Alpine A110, my brother has one, you have to go to Porsche GT3 level yeah. to really like say, hey, this car is clearly better than, yeah. than, than, than this car. But from moving from a 60, 70 K Euro car to a 200, it's a huge car. Yeah. So everything in between, like I drove Cayman GTS, 911, even if I'm a Porsche fan, it's like, hey, this Alpine can do everything's so good so like run uh, cheap uh, in terms of cars like uh, it's perfect for mountain roads for uh, highway for everything and that's the other car that i think is undervalued currently in the market yeah yeah they're cool that's an interesting question when you go okay what's the sort of car where do you what's the next jump and and i think your point about okay uh, there's lots of great cars in the middle and stuff but like something like an alpine a110 and then like gt3 but my, my next question would be, what's the next one? Like to get, to get a noticeably better experience than GT3, I, I don't know. No. <laughs> I don't, yeah, don't that, know. That, that's, the, that's the problem. Like I think you get already into the hypercar. And, yeah, I think so. And maybe the modern ones are not going to be really a, a huge improvement in experience. Yeah. Like maybe if you go from a GT3 to an F40, or to a GT or to a Carrera GT, yeah. and you get a whole different uh, experience of the car. So there's a, a lot of value. But uh, I, don't, I don't know. It's like with Ferrari. Like when you can buy now a 296 yeah. that is as fast as a, almost as a Ferrari Enzo. Yeah. Uh, you know, it, it, that's like the entry level cars already are so good that you have to move all the way to the best cars that they can yeah. offer to really feel a huge a huge gap yeah. with the electric cars i assume that that's going to happen even more you know is that if you get an entry level Cayman electric in 15 years 20 years like what's the purpose of getting the the 911 gts yeah. electric uh, it's going to be more or less the yeah, same it's going to be interesting i was chatting to someone yesterday um who is the manti sort of retailer in the UK, they, they fit all the Manti kits. And we were talking about uh, lap times at the Nürburgring. You know, why not? <laughs> talking to someone from Manti, so you might as well. And it's, it's interesting when you look at, so like 992 GT3, I think at the moment is 655, I think is the official 993 mm-hmm. time-ish. The Manti kit is five seconds faster. So it's like 50. And then the record is like, the black series which i think is 39 mm-hmm. so and gt2 rs was like 40 41 so the difference between a gt2 rs mr and a gt3 mr it's not over a really really long racetrack 
It's like seven seconds no. or something, which around a, a small circuit is not that much. And one of no, them has nothing. 500 horsepower and one has 700 horsepower. Yeah. So like that's meant that. And then if you go, yeah. what was the 918? That was like 645 or 646 or something. Yeah. So similar to an hour GT3. And I think with the next GT3 RS, it's only going to have 510 horsepower or something. But I'm pretty sure it will be faster than the Black Series. I don't think Porsche will release it if it's not faster than the Black Series <laughs> around the yeah. Nervo ring. Oh. But it's only going to have 500 horsepower and it's going to be the fastest car you can buy. It might not quite be, maybe the GT2 RS, but like there's no other yeah, production car that's going to be faster yeah. than that. <laughs> Especially since we are like 99% of the people cannot extract uh, yes. Yes. 60, 70% of the car. Like, totally. Uh, yeah, it was absurd uh, at this point, but uh, that's part of the marketing. That's part of like you are paying this much because you know that is the best car in the yeah. business. But uh, because I, I have a friend that, uh, in fact, uh, is the driver for Porsche, um, and and the the guy told me like, hey, look, like I got the, into the new GT3 RS, uh, and and just because like they were using new tires. Those yeah. tires are making the car 11 seconds faster. Just the tires. Yeah. So we test drove the previous gen GT3 with the new tires, and we were already 10 seconds faster. Yeah. So, and about the Carrera GT, it was it was really like being my dream car. Like it was kind of shocking to see that the new Boxster Xpider or the GT4 is as fast as the Carrera GT and Nurburgring. Yeah. And you say. Oh, so a regular GT4 is as fast as a Carrera GT, but then if you put the, like if you develop a new tires in the Carrera GT, it will yeah. be another 15, 20 seconds faster. That's but, the thing I would love to see is each time these, because every time a new record gets broken, like say it was, I don't know whether it was the GT2 RS time, but it was on the Cup 2R and nothing else had really been running the Cup 2R at that point. And now we'll see the new GT3 RS, which we know has got a new tyre, which will be faster again. And I would love to see the old record holders run on the new tyre to see, like, you know, let's let's put like for like on the same tyres. Like, put a 918 around on Cup 2Rs. It's going to be really fast. Um, yeah. I know, and especially that they are for marketing. purposely developed for like matching this car, like this, or like yeah. So, so if they can, if, if there is a company that makes the effort of it, let's develop new tires for the Carrera GT. Yeah, they will get twenty five seconds yeah, faster for sure, so, for sure. So, so well, uh, well, that's how it is. Yeah, yeah, it is. <laughs> so, and and also like lap times are kind of. Irrelevant because no one's racing anyone, and it. I think the bit that separates cars for me, the main thing, because you can get like, say, you take your Alpine Alpine A one ten, it handles great, looks cool. The thing that separates cars for me is generally powertrain. Like, is it how does it sound and how does it go? It's like an experience, and that's something like, okay, I love a manual gearbox if I'm on the road. I also like paddles, mm. but. Something like a Carrera GT, it has that really exotic sound, or mm. a LaFerrari, it has that crazy, you know, sound, and that for me is Get like ready the big. For the electric. Just, <laughs> yes, and then fully electric. Uh, <laughs> you have to have the McMurtry. Have you seen that? The McMurtry Spearling. Mm. Nope. It went up. Um, I did an interview with one of the guys, uh, Thomas, who's sort of in charge of the ah, project. Ah, the one in Goodwood. Yeah, so it went up in Goodwood and, ah, yeah, and it yeah, broke yeah, the record. Yeah, that's what um, yeah, yeah, I saw that. As electric cars go, that's a really interesting car, ignoring like the fact it's electric or anything, just because it has the the fan technology and, and whatnot. Um, it'll be interesting to see how this develops as time goes on, because electric cars have made performance sort of irrelevant. Like <laughs> if your your latest supercar, McLaren, Ferrari, whatever, <laughs> will probably get beaten by a Tesla Model X Plaid. You know, a big mm. family wagon that you can put seven people in will out quarter mile drag whatever exotic sports car you buy. <laughs> so, so, yeah. so you've got to make them yeah. involving and fun and have other elements. So, we'll, it'll be interesting to see how that 
that kind of goes. Yeah, this this last week uh, I got the chance to drive the whole M lineup at Harman Track, mm. and and it was funny because the first car that I drove it was the i4 M50 the electric. Yeah, and then I jump in right away to the new M4 competition, and and it was kind of like this gap of like giving you feedback, the feeling, everything. It was so big yeah. right now that even if the other car was really, really fast already, but the, the feeling of how this car breaks because the electric car, yeah. the braking uh, systems are different and it's kind of doesn't have the same feeling, the steering, everything was like, oof, they are still 15, 20 years uh, away from getting a, a similar experience, I think, because it's going to be hard, it's hard. To, to make those cars uh, nimble, agile, and, and make you feel excited about driving. Because still, I, I don't get what, how the, the purpose or how the, the, the great value that the electrics are bringing to regular cars, mm. are torque and its um, acceleration, that, that's something that 90% of the people don't care when yeah. they're buying cars, not, not enthusiasts. But yeah, most like, people don't care about Okay, it. if you have a, a car that uh, goes from, like if every car is going to do uh, 0 to 60 in five seconds, like what for? Like uh, you cannot drive more than 30 miles per hour yeah. in central London. No. <laughs> and then it's like, Shit. okay, yeah. I'm done. <laughs> you cannot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it's a party trick, so, isn't it? It's, it's the electric yeah. car party trick. They're all incredibly fast if you want them to be um, in a yeah. straight line. Not preferably, yeah. possibly well, not slowing down or going around a corner. Um, what's hmm. the most interesting car to you at the moment? What are you googling? What are you looking up? Well, the the one that is exciting me the most that is coming up is the well just release is the GT4 RS. Mm. I think that's that's the car that excites me the most this year. Um, I, I saw it in L, at the LA Auto Show first time, um, and I was really excited. It's still sad that even if it's the, the best, almost almost the best from Porsche, that is still heavy. I was expecting a little bit less weight. Uh, it's almost uh, 1,500 almost. Uh, yeah. But the rest like looks like that's going to be a car to keep forever, you know? It does. Uh, it. For a rest. it looks like it's a real it. experience to drive yeah. that car. Like, I think it's going to be quite intense. I don't think you'll want to drive it for too long, but like yeah. when you do. Oh, no, but that's good. That's good for the age, you know, that yeah. uh, they are, I think they went also for the fun factor in this car. Yeah. Not that like, hey, I don't want to make it as effective maybe as the GT3 and and because if not, it will have beaten the, the GT3 with um, the yeah. out um, and everything. But it's more like, hey, let's do that involvement and driving uh, experience better. And being the last hurrah of uh, GT4 uh, and mid-engine cars from Porsche, uh, I think is, is, is a great package. Yeah, I think we're in a real like time for Porsche at the moment of they're just going, well, it's going electric, so let's just make as many cool Whoa. combustion engine cars, <laughs> yeah. as, like all the special models. Let's just, you know, throw them out. Um, and then, Yeah, I like that they are going that, um, like, I don't know why like Toyota is doing it with the ER lineup, like ER86, yeah. Supra now, Supra Manon. That's good. But I don't know why, like all the rest of the brands are not stretching those last years because, okay, it's, they're saying 20, uh, 35, 2040. So you still have good 15 years uh, to, yeah. to really uh, make the most of this or, or, or just extend those combustion engine cars for enthusiasts and, and, and make them available for the next years. Like even if they don't want to invest as a company, like in the case of the Alpine, for example, they're going to kill the car and by 2024 or the Cayman, they're going to kill the yeah. car by June 2024, because there are some things, regulations that they need to comply and they don't want to invest on that. But I think a, a good movement from those brands would be, hey, if you make the year 86, keep it till 2030. Even if the car is not going to be as fast as whatever is in the market, but you're going to have a real enthusiast car that is going to be the two, three, four options that... Yeah, the... 
you, you, I was talking to Toyota have. about uh, about the GR86, and because I, I think they can only make it for two years in Europe. Two years, yeah. Um, and then uh, the problem is the emissions. It's like yeah. Euro Seven, I think, is the the new thing, and they just can't do it. They're like, it just doesn't. We just can't do it with that car. And then the fleet, you know, all the it's emissions related. And but I think mm-hmm. hats off to them for making that car and going. We can only sell this for two years, <laughs> and we're still going to make it. Like that's cool. Yeah, it's really cool. What they are doing. But yeah, but, right. Uh, Final question: Five car garage, unlimited value. What would you have? Unlimited value. Okay, but camera GT. Yeah. As I said, that would be the, the unicorn GT3 RS 4.0. Nice. Alpine A110. Yeah. GR, uh, GR Yaris. Cool. I'm so happy with that. Yeah. And then I will get something more more classic, like uh, even if it's not that crazy, like a uh, Ferrari 355 Challenge mm. or something more special that I, I wouldn't go crazy with that, but just to have something yeah, yeah, yeah. different, special, and, and the, the, they're really but, cool. Uh, I, I've I've been sort of watching that's discounting that I will need of course that 1000 car to, to drive yeah yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah yeah um, but well I could drive the jar yes. yeah it's true <laughs> you could um, we, I, I was chatting to some people yesterday and we were walking around this car park and there was a, a 355 GTS a manual 355 mm-hmm. GTS and mm-hmm. we were looking at that and like that like that's a really cool car like yep. Targa not super soft in terms of twisty because it's not a convertible, but manual gearbox, amazing sounding engine, kind of classic now, you know, definitely classic now. Yeah, very cool. I like to have like in, for those cars, for that, because I like to have cars that I have uh, experience and that I, that are from my age, you know, mm. like even if there are many more cars, like I, I, I of course I would like, love to have an F40, to have a car you did, yeah. to have like, all, the, all those cars, and there are many, like uh, Lancia Delta Integrale, a Subaru Impreza, like uh, uh, those kind of cars. But I, I like to have like some of the best of my age, you know, mm. that uh, are like that. I was really excited when they, when they were came out, and not and, and not that old. I saw that the forty was this. No, yeah. Well, but I didn't leave that in that, that moment. I think that's really. That's such a good point because I think it's very easy in in the world of, of, you know, someone's like, you can have whatever you like. Or let's say, you know, the business has done very well and you sell the business and you've made your bazillions of pounds and you're like, well, what am I going to buy? Well, if you've made a bazillion pounds, maybe you buy a lot of cars. But if you can only have a few, lots of people go for their kind of like the cars that other people think are really special versus like, the one that connects with you. Like it, I think you've got to go for definitely if you, if you are going to keep it for a long time, the cars that resonate with you the most are the ones that you're going to enjoy the most. Like otherwise it's, you're do, hey, almost living you someone else's dream. With the, with the list of you will go to that supercar yeah. uh, driver meet and say, okay, I want a CLK GTR, yeah. McLaren F1 GTR, Carrera GT F40 LM. Yeah. Yeah, you will end up with that list that, uh, yeah, of course, the best of every brand, of every company brand. You know? Yeah, but then, yeah, it's, it's definitely like, but would you use them all? And would you <laughs> would you enjoy them? I don't know. It's, it would take a lot of time and money and effort to try and curate <laughs> that one. Well, thanks very much for coming on the podcast. Thank you so much, Sam, for the opportunity. I'd love to have you on board, yeah. Roster. Cheers.